Okay, so what, what drew me into Oasis, uh, I'd been working as a scientist for quite a while at Sussex University. I, I was a chemical physicist, so I used to fire lasers into vacuums and watch that. But while I was doing that, I was uh, volunteering at my local church. Uh, and we'd been doing that for quite a few years. I think for about four or five years, uh, I'd had the opportunity to kind of work with young people. Uh, and although I, I found science interesting, I found people far more fascinating and actually the difference that you can experience and see in the lives of young people is phenomenal. Uh, and I never had that same passion and vision uh, that for, um, for science as I did when I started working with people. So um, when I was volunteering uh, at, this, at my local church, which was down in Brighton, uh, a friend of mine actually had started studying two years before I started at the, on the Oasis course. Uh, and he did, uh, so he basically finished the year that I started, so we never overlapped. Uh, but the first two years that he did, I could see all of the learning that he was having. Uh, he was a great team leader. Uh, he was uh, investing in us as volunteers. Uh, we did a number of things that at the time felt quite groundbreaking. Now we kind of look back and probably think, yeah, not really that radical or that new. Uh, but at the time we kind of felt we were pushing things uh, and, and we had some great people in the church that would encourage us and cheer us on uh, and fight those political battles in the background uh, on our behalf and that was, uh, that was phenomenal because we were a bunch of young guys and, and, and females that were sort of doing things in our church. Um, so I think wanting to be able to do that in a way that I felt uh, made it um, a lot more worthwhile and tangible. Uh, one thing that I've learned over the years is that the better trained you are and the more um, experience that you've got in youth work, the more fulfilling it is, the more effective you are and actually you, you know you enjoy it more, the young people find it, find it better as well uh, and you see far better results and outcomes because you, you've got some uh, information, you've got models to work to uh, and you can actually see where you're going uh, with things. So not only that but you're able to invest in, in the team around you and the other people around you as well. So I, I've always been a a big, big advocate of training, and I think it's such a shame when people kind of are so enthusiastic for youth work that they jump straight in with both feet and don't do any training, and unfortunately sometimes find themselves getting a bit burnt out, or find themselves uh, just losing their way a bit, or getting a bit frustrated because things aren't quite happening as they want, or as their in initial vision and passion was driving them, and a lot of that is just because they haven't been able to access ways of, of learning about that and different approaches to things, so when something doesn't work, they've kind of thought, oh that was a failure, rather than, oh actually there's probably 20 different ways of doing that and I've only tried one and can I try something different so so for me that was a really key thing I wanted to uh, having sort of got like a PhD in science I, I had no qualifications whatsoever in youth work so I went right the way back to level one in doing this certificate in education which is like the first year of university uh, but for me it was really important because I learned a lot about theology which I've never really studied uh, other than just kind of in, a, in my own youth group I'd learned about uh, early church history and I'd learned about how all of that fits together and some kind of theological framework for what we do in youth ministry. But I'd also learned a lot about how to do youth work and what um, good youth work practice looks like uh, and how to do that in a way which is, is not only safe uh, and follows good safeguarding practice, but actually is creative and helps you to reflect and helps you to learn and helps you then to share that learning with the young people. And, uh, and I think a new thing for me was really about how the young people engage in participation. So how do we hear the voice of young people in the work that we do? Uh, up until that point, I've been, I've been involved in a little bit of kind of teaching in Sunday school and that sort of thing, and conducting a, like a junior band. But that was very much adults saying, well, this is what young people need, so I'm gonna do it for them and they'll enjoy it. And it was kind of like an entertainment type thing or a kind of teaching, teacher pupil type relationship. But actually youth work's a very different dynamic completely. So you're taking young people uh, and you're listening to them and finding out, well, what are your needs? Where are you at? What, what do you need in order to, to progress and to move forward? Uh, and, and that, for me, is... I, I learned all of that, I think, uh, at Oasis, was um, learning to, to take young people uh, as who they are uh, and to see how can, how can I do um, youth work in a way that is really meaningful because it's starting with you and not with me. Uh, how do I uh, understand where you're going uh, and help you uh, achieve the best that you can uh, achieve uh, or, or experience uh, a better life or, or, or whatever it is that that young person wants rather than what I think that young person needs or what, what they ought to be doing in, uh, as far as I'm concerned and rather than giving advice uh, all of a sudden it, uh, and me thinking oh you know what you should do this it, it turned very much into um, listening to young people uh, and helping them to explore different options and to help them to think through the different things that they could be doing uh, and, and putting them in the driving seat really.